Good morning, everyone. I'm going to start with probably one of the most important and probably one of the most divisive questions you could ever ask. Who is Jesus? If you're ever in a room with a number of unbelieving friends and you're looking for a question that will stop the conversation dead in its tracks and maybe, just maybe, start a very lively discussion, this is it. And this is not a new question. People have been asking it since the moment Jesus came onto the scene. And I believe it's a question that everyone will have to answer at some point in their lives. Now, as you know, we're busy with a series called The Chosen. And I sincerely hope that if you haven't done so yet, that you will go and watch the first two episodes of the series. Today, we're all going to watch episode three right after this message. And you will hear this question, who is Jesus, being asked. And my hunch is that it's probably the central question to this whole series. I mean, if you read the Gospels, you will find that people were constantly thinking about it and speculating who Jesus was. And so I assume that it will come up time and again throughout the series. In fact, if you think about the life of Jesus, in the end, it was who Jesus claimed to be rather than what he did that got him crucified. He claimed to be the Son of God. And he eventually proved that to be true when he came back from the dead. But that's a story for another day. From the very beginning of Jesus' ministry on earth, people were wondering about his identity. And as we go through the series, you will get to see Jesus through the eyes of different characters. Religious teachers like Nicodemus, impulsive fishermen like Simon, desperate people like Mary Magdalene. And you'll hear all of them having opinions about who Jesus was, based on how they experienced him. Now, we are still very much in the beginning of Jesus' public ministry in this series. But much later in his ministry, Jesus had a conversation with his disciples. And he asked them, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Many people saw what Jesus was doing and they heard what he was saying and they thought he was a great prophet and possibly a wonderful teacher. And then Jesus asked those people who saw much more of what he was doing and they heard so much more of what he was saying. Basically, he asked the people, who knew him best. But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Friends, no matter who you are, this is a question that you will have to consider at some point in your life. Who is Jesus? Who do you say he is? Not what do others say, but who do you say Jesus is? And whatever your answer is to that question will have a profound impact on the rest of your life. Now, I did a series earlier in this year called Objection Overruled, and one of the messages was entitled, Who Was Jesus? So if you're interested in a thorough explanation of Jesus' identity, please go to our website, look for the podcast, and you'll find it there. So without going into too much detail right now, I'll just say that if you looked at everything Jesus said and did and how he lived, there's no way you can say anything else about him and that he is indeed the promised Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. Now, I know there are lots of opinions about Jesus, and one of the most popular ones is to say that he was only a good teacher. And this is a statement that was brilliantly answered by C.S. Lewis in his book, Mere Christianity. Let's read it. I'm trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That's the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on level with the man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. Friends, if Jesus was just another human being, a normal person, and he made the claims that he did, it means that he was unable to fulfill his promises and thus led people away from the truth and not towards it. And that's not something a great teacher would do. So Jesus was definitely not just a good teacher. It was also clear from his works that he was not crazy. He was consistent in his actions. And no one could point out any sin in him. So he was not a con man or a madman either. Another popular opinion about Jesus, like we read a bit earlier, is that he was just another prophet. But that was never how Jesus presented himself. He showed himself 
as so much more than just one of God's messengers. He didn't use the prophetic formula of thus says the Lord like all prophets did. Instead, he said, I tell you. And that's not something a prophet would ever say. Also, no other prophet has ever claimed that people can look at them and see God. Yet Jesus did that. No prophet ever presented themselves as the solution to people's spiritual quest. But Jesus did. And so Jesus was definitely not just a prophet. Friends, if we look at the evidence in the Gospels and how the series will unfold, I'm sure you will all realize more and more that Jesus was indeed to be claimed to be the Son of God and indeed God himself. C.S. Lewis, who was previously an atheist, came to exactly the same conclusion. Just listen to the second part of the quote I read earlier. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and kill him as a demon. Or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. The question of Jesus' identity always brings us to a choice. And the evidence clearly points towards Jesus as being who he said he was. The son of the living God. The saviour of the world. However, what if you didn't have all the evidence yet, like we have? What if you weren't in such a privileged position to be able to read the Gospels? What if you didn't know how the story was going to end? What, what would it have been like to meet Jesus for the very first time? Have you ever thought about that? Just use your imagination a bit. What would it have been like to be a Jew in a world where Romans ruled? What would it have been like to be part of an oppressed nation where your people were impoverished? And you had almost no rights at all. What if you were part of a family in this nation and you were extremely poor? So even the little power and independence or options that comes with money was not yours. The rich always had power over you and you had nothing and you were told that you were nothing. What if that was you? Or let's take it a step further. What if you were a child? in that socioeconomic class, in that era. In fact, let's go even further. Imagine that you were a little girl. Because if you were a boy, you would have been allowed to at least go to Torah school, to learn to read, and you would have been taught the law of Moses. But little girls did not even have that opportunity. So in a sense, a little girl in a poor Jewish family was the lowest on the pecking order in that society. No power. No voice, no rights. Now imagine that was you. What would it have been like to meet Jesus for the first time? What would you think of him? And what do you think he would think of you? I mean, the rest of society wouldn't really pay any attention to you. Well, I can tell you how Jesus felt about children like that. We read it in Matthew 19. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Jesus loves children and adults and sinners and those who don't have a voice or seem the lowest in society. You know, I think children looked at Jesus and they felt safe. They saw his gentleness and his trustworthiness. Someone you could share your fears and your anxieties with. Someone who would listen patiently to all your questions and respond wisely and lovingly. That is what Jesus is like. And I think that even if you don't know who he is yet, even if you are still wondering about his identity, when you come to him like a child, with honest questions, no pretense, no trying to impress him because you know you can't impress him, when you come to him honestly and humbly, knowing that you haven't got it all figured out, that you don't have it all together, then I think, you're going to meet him for who he really is. And you're going to discover that you need him more than anything or anyone else. In fact, Jesus wants us to come to him honestly, humbly and vulnerably like little children. Just listen to what he said in Matthew 18. Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Friends, when you realize who you are, a sinner in need of a savior, 
a child in need of a heavenly father. That is when you will truly see Jesus for who he is. The son of God, the savior of the world, the one who came to set you free. And when you put your complete trust in him, just like little children, then you will get to know him as gentle and humble, as kind and compassionate, as wise, as faithful, as loving, and more trustworthy than you would, could ever imagine. So I want to encourage you. Open your heart to him once again, or maybe for the first time today. Don't try to be too clever, too adult-like, or try to have all the answers. Admit your struggles. Put your trust in him. Become like little children. Because Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Amen. Dear, thank you so much that you love us and care for us. Thank you that you are kind and compassionate and humble and gentle and faithful and that we can trust you. And if we just want to come to you again today and put our trust in you. Lord, we need you. Please lead us and provide for us like only you can. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen. Friends, please remember to watch episode 3 of The Chosen right after this message. And next week we'll talk about episode 4 and then we'll watch it together. Please receive God's blessing and know that Jesus is calling you to become like children, to put your trust completely in him. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.